Right, thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. And right now we're going to be talking about harvesting all that beautiful rainwater that we wish we were getting. Uh, it's a great topic, and joining me is Dick Peterson, who is a consultant. Uh, Dick is an old friend to the program. I, Dick, I think you first came on the show like 20 years ago. That's right. <laughs> so it's great to have you back on. You, you work as a consultant in rainwater harvesting, green building, and I'm sure other things as well. And we appreciate your time. This is a great topic for our area. And it's appropriate for people to be thinking about conserving mm -hmm. water. Right. When we do get rain, we get a lot of it. All right. Well, that's the one thing we should be thinking about here is the, is the fact that in our region in particular, here in central Texas, when it does rain, it comes in torrents. And that uh, it's a blessing when it happens, but it's also a kind of a curse because the runoff uh, can really be damaging to the environment. Yes, and we can try to uh, assuage that a little bit by using swales and berms in our own landscape to do much like what municipal governments are doing with those big stormwater detention ponds. We can right. make small little detention ponds in our own landscape and let mm -hmm. the water soak in over a period of time. Well, we'll t be talking about swales and berms and some of those physical interventions in mm -hmm. the landscape, mm -hmm. but we also want to talk about uh, capturing mm -hmm. some of that rainwater, and uh, that really means as it comes off our roofs, right? Right, right. Okay, so let's talk about the strategies that are involved here. Um, first off, uh, you, you advise people to start small. What does that mean, to start small with rainwater uh, uh, harvesting? Well, kind of put your foot into the, to the water and get your feet wet, <laughs> right, literally, right. and uh, get a couple of rain barrels and put them on the gutters. Mm -hmm. uh, just replace your downspout, shorten it, and put it into a rain barrel. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to get started, and you'll find that your plants really, really like the rainwater. Well, yeah, and, and then I'll testify to this. In, um, in a former garden that I had, I harvested rainwater all the time, and I always used it for those specialty plants that hated our city water. <laughs> yes, because uh, it's, well, it's hard. And, and there's nothing about the city is where the water comes from. Those <laughs> alkaline lakes That's right. runs through all the limestone. Right. Uh, in and, our case. But. And so things like, uh, and I occasionally would have something like in a camellia in a pot and tried always, always to give it just rainwater. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, rainwater is slightly acidic. Uh, it has lightning happening with the rains. It has a little nitrogen in it. So mm -hmm. you'll always notice your grass really perks up with just a quarter inch rain when you've been watering an inch of yeah. the day before and it didn't do anything. So no, it, there's nothing like good old fashioned rain. Plant, right? Plants will love it. Right, so when we talk about rainwater harvesting and, and barrels, a lot of people are, you know, they have qualms about those, of these things and they, they're, they, they're afraid sometimes to stick in their toes because they hear, oh, you'll have nothing but mosquitoes or it'll stink or this, that, or the other. Let's, let's answer some of those basic questions. For concerns about, for example, uh, get, uh, mosquito breeding grounds, uh, what's the appropriate answer? Well, as the organic approach is to use Bacillus thuringiensis, and mm -hmm. it's available in granular form or tablets. And uh, if you get the tablet form, uh, you can break it up and only use maybe a thumbnail size piece for a rain barrel, a dog yeah. dish. And I'll uh, show people th sure. these, these are available Just, everywhere, sure. mosquito dunks. Right. And you're right, you don't need to put the whole dunk no. in there. Because one dunk will cover 100 square feet of water for 30 days, that's without rain with BT on the surface, mm -hmm. and so it just keeps the mosquitoes from emerging. So only use little pieces in small containers, but mm -hmm. it is safe for your dogs, the birds, bird baths are fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you can put it in the rain gutters if you right. little, put little pieces in it. Yeah, you can just toss it up into the rain mm -hmm. gutter. And uh, these are, as I said, available everywhere, and once you start using them routinely, you mm. know, you need to, uh, to get out there about once a month, I think. Or after a big rain. Or, okay. Do it again. Okay. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that answers that side of the question. You know, um, for people who uh, are, again, maybe a little nervous about the idea of doing this, what, how do they distribute the water from their rain barrels? What's the, uh, the easiest way for them to do that? Water flows downhill. Mm, okay, so, that, that's, uh, a, that's a good point. <laughs> it's going to come out generally out of the bottom of your tank, and mm -hmm. you know you can use a water hose. Um, the thing about it is you only can water standing up as high as the water is in your tank. So mm -hmm. as, as the water begins to go down in the tank, 
you began to bend over further and further and further. <laughs> Doing the limbo the garden. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then you begin to think, okay, one, is my tank, tank tall enough? Do I want a bigger tank? Mm -hmm. And two, maybe do I want some assistance? So you can get the little plug-in pumps that just boost it, and it only rug, runs when you plug it in. That's a first start. And then mm -hmm. the automatic pumps, when uh, it'll cut on and off when you have your finger on the end of the hose or off of it, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. So. So there's an answer for all of this stuff, basically. When we, but start small, yeah. graduate, you know, mm -hmm. as you learn, you'll, you'll mm -hmm. not then go out and buy a whole lot of things that you may not use. Okay, and what about the folks who really are just thinking about doing it on the cheap and putting it in like a garbage can, a plastic garbage can or something like that? They're okay until they split down the side. They're not made to hold eight gallons or eight pounds per gallon of water, you know, mm -hmm. in a big volume. So you're probably going to find out they split pretty easily. So okay. Get a, get a barrel. They start in the $100 range and go up. All right. Now let's talk about moving up in scale. To, uh, a lot of people see these uh, sometimes very attractive looking mm -hmm. tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, cisterns are being used now yes. increasingly. Yes. What are the options for kind of growing to scale on rainwater harvesting? You begin to look at embodied energy because if you're shipping them long distances, you're shipping air. So you try to get a local tank if you can. You know, metal mm -hmm. tanks are made here locally. Uh, polymer tanks are made here locally now. So we're not shipping that air all over the place. That mm -hmm. cuts down on your shipping costs too. Mm -hmm. But they come in sizes from 100 gallons up to 10,000 gallons. And But mostly in a home landscape, you're going to be in the... 150 gallon starter range up to maybe 2,500 gallons. Okay, and uh, is there an advantage? To say, we see those galvanized metal ones, and, and I know that there are a kind of polyurethane or plastic mm -hmm. ones out there. What, what what is the ideal? Are, do they each have advantages? They each have advantages, and that's where when I'm interviewing somebody, mm -hmm. I say, you know, what are you going to use it for? Mm -hmm. What kind of plants are you going to use it for? But then also, what about the aesthetics? Do you mind looking out on a green or gray or black or uh, they have them in blue or whatever color mm -hmm. these big tanks are coming in now? Do you mind looking at that? Or would you rather see a nice, shiny, galvanized tank mm -hmm. or a painted metal tank? Would you rather see a wooden tank? Mm -hmm. you know, so they can take a metal tank or a poly tank and sheath it with wood. So mm -hmm. you begin to look at the aesthetics and homeowners associations get involved and say, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see this. You know, right, so. right. So uh, obviously people need to do some homework, though I do understand that the law has changed and homeowners associ associations can no longer ban these, is that correct? That is true, that's a state law. Uh, mm -hmm. Solar panels are, and uh, water conservation devices, you have to allow them, but you may restrict placement, view from the street, yeah. that sort of thing. You may not be able to put it in your front yard. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> okay. Now, um, let's spend a little bit of time talking about disbursement from these kinds of different uh, uh, things, mm -hmm. the cisterns and the metal tanks and what have you. Um, uh, you were telling me earlier that soaker hoses really are ideal f uh, for getting the water out of these. They, they work fine, or even the, the type of hose that you used to use, the flat water hose that has the spray in the, up right. into the air, you can turn those upside down mm -hmm. and make your own little dispersion Mm -hmm. system for rain barrels and it'll right. just kind of soak out but you need to be very aware of the volume of water that's coming out if you leave it on your tank is empty so okay. you become your own water conserving advisor so mm -hmm. you're going to look at the landscape and say hey I need to turn that hose off and add another one or something else move it around as a consumer is there anything you would warn people about about any of these products they all have advantages, and probably every one of them has a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say research, you know, do a little bit of looking around on the web, um, interview people that have them in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, did you have a problem with this? Did you have a problem with that? You know, right. people ask me about, well, the black tanks heat up a lot. So, right. you know, I just and it, tell it's them, important to cover them all, isn't it? Yeah, so you look at it. But I just tell them that the, you don't have to saute your vegetables as long because mm -hmm. the water is warm when you're watering them. Yeah, right. Vegetables. Well, um, and it, it is important, though, about the covering of the, of the tanks. That helps on a, a number of fronts, correct? They need to be opaque. Opaque. Need, yeah, mm -hmm. you, you don't want the sunlight going in because okay. the algae will grow. And it's not going to hurt anything mm -hmm. if you're doing it in the landscape, but it could clog up your... Okay. 
the distribution devices. And in the use of berms and swales, we mentioned that at the mm -hmm. very beginning, and we only have a short amount of time mm -hmm. here, but uh, you've described a berm as kind of an open parenthesis kind of shape. Sure. And it's a kind of a raised uh, uh, hillock, if you will, or, yeah. ber you know, berm is what it's called. Make a low depression, use what you've got out of it to make a high berm on the back of it, mm -hmm. and as you go down a hill, you can then sculpt several of them where mm -hmm. they'll go out of one into another one, and right. that's the rain garden idea. Yeah, and it's an ancient idea it and is. one that's very effective in mm -hmm. slowing the water down and keeping it on the property, watering plants and... House uh, by house. House by house, there you go. Well, Dick, I know that there are lots of great resources out there, and I'm sure that we'll be directing people to those, sure. and we appreciate so much your coming to share a lot of this important information with us, so thanks for being on Central Texas Garden. Thank you for asking me. And coming up next is our friend Daphne. Thank you.